My name is Manjula Salvaraja. I'm a Toronto-based tech journalist. A welcome to this discussion that is hosted by LADEM Startups, a nonprofit accelerator in Toronto that works exclusively with international startups. Our topic today is the Startup Visa Program and the role that international startups will play in the future recovery of the economy. I am really pleased to have the perfect guest here for this topic because he's one of the architects of the Startup Visa Program. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, you to Yuri Navarro. He's the managing partner of the Canadian venture capital firm, Canada Ventures. Previously, he was CEO of the National Angel Capital Organization. And prior to that, a Chief of Staff at the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade in Ontario. Uh, as a founder, investor and policymaker, Yuri has spent the last 15 years working to support the success of early stage technology companies. He has built a robust network, uh, we should say, of over 4,000 angel investors, VCs, and family offices globally. As one of the architects of the Startup Visa Program, he's a champion of the Canadian startup ecosystem and uh, innovative models for global startup and investor communities. Yuri, such a pleasure to have you here. Welcome. Thank you, Manjula. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be participating again at another uh, Latin Startups event. So let's start off here. I mean, maybe I know some of the people that are listening will be familiar with this, but you know, give sort of a, a quick description of what the Startup Visa Program is. Sure. Uh, yeah, for those uh, who don't know, uh, the Startup Visa Program is a program that was initially kicked off back in 2013, if I'm not mistaken, uh, by Minister uh, Jason Kenney. Um, and the purpose of the program is really to try to encourage uh, tech talent from all over the world uh, to come up here uh, to Canada to join us here and help us build uh, what is really one of the uh, fastest growing and most exciting ecosystems uh, in the world, in my opinion. What does it offer international entrepreneurs? Yeah, so the Startup Visa program is uh, mainly focused around uh, helping to support the immigration component of bringing your business to Canada. Um, so uh, I should say that it is definitely intended to be a business driven initiative where if you have a business uh, and you would like to either expand that or uh, in some cases move that uh, to Canada, um, the program essentially offers a fast track for entrepreneurs to be able to access permanent residency in Canada. So permanent residency, of course, being similar to kind of a green card as opposed to a visa. Um, and uh, so what the program does is that if a qualified entrepreneur uh, can essentially receive uh, the blessing or the sponsorship of a uh, designated uh, organization, uh, which tends to be either a, a VC firm, an angel group, or an incubator or accelerator, um, once that, uh, that uh, sponsorship is given to the entrepreneur, then they're able to essentially bring up up to five team members, uh, uh, presumably important team members, founders, uh, this kind of thing, and their families uh, to Canada on a permanent residency. Um, when it launched uh, back in 2013, I think they were looking at about a six month turnaround time, although maybe, you know, that may, may be closer to six to 12 months uh, these days. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but that is the program. So it is actually quite a quite a fast uh, turnaround uh, compared yeah. to sort of other other avenues. Um, why is this program important uh, for Canada, especially given that you know we are going to need um, some kind of a recovery post pandemic? What is the role that the, this program can play in Canada? Yeah, I think I think rightly so. The Canadian government has been focusing a lot of energy on the technology sector uh, as a driver for economic growth into the future. I mean, this is happening before the pandemic. Uh, the growth of the ecosystem was happening before the pandemic. And even, um, you know, that trend of, of seeing uh, more and more entrepreneurs coming to Canada to build their businesses here was something that we were seeing uh, before the pandemic. But now that uh, this has happened and now that we're in this situation uh, where we're having, having to rethink our, our economic strategy of the country, I think the government is definitely looking at this as one of the avenues that they hope to generate uh, significant uh, economic growth uh, and, and jobs uh, creation. And part of that is because technology companies, you know, tend to be globally focused companies. They, they, they sell uh, often all over the world, definitely outside of Canada, in addition to kind of whatever they might be doing inside of Canada. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the fact that we have such a great relationship with so many different countries from a trading perspective, especially the US, uh, really makes Canada an attractive uh, place for these businesses to launch. Uh, a place where you have a, a higher standard of living, um, where you have 
access to talent, um, you know, very friendly immigration uh, rules, and uh, and that really, um, you know, helps to uh, make it easier to build your business and, and to focus on building the business. So now, something. you've seen, obviously, some um, some entrepreneurs that have come through this program already. Can you walk us through a, a success story or two? Yeah, there's a, there's a few uh, that I'm aware of uh, that have come through the Start Visa program. Probably the one that most people kind of point to is the Huzza story. Mm -hmm. um, so Huzza uh, was a company, I believe, out of the Ukraine that, uh, that uh, had received investment from uh, one of the, uh, it was one of the angel network uh, groups, I believe. Um, through the Startup Visa program, they were brought to Canada uh, to build their businesses. And within the course of a couple of years, uh, they were actually able to successfully um, generate an exit for their investors uh, through acquisition. They were actually acquired uh, by Kickstarter. And, and, and just to, to, uh, to point to kind of um, an interesting data on, uh, point on this, uh, when Kickstarter acquired them, they acquired them as a way to kind of establish a presence in Canada. So, um, you know, it, it's not one of those stories where um, where somebody acquired a company and then took it down south and we never saw them again. That actually resulted in jobs creation and um, and, and more investment happening in Canada as a result of that. So you know, I think those kind of opportunities are, are excellent uh, for Canada, are excellent for um, the ecosystem uh, and, of course, for its investors. Um, so these are, you know, these are some of them, but there are many others that we've seen, um, you know, uh, entrepreneurs that have come here from, from the U.S., uh, from Europe, from Latin America, um, that have established essentially uh, their roots here, um, you know, have brought their families, uh, set up a life for themselves and have built companies. Uh, in many cases have had to pivot, uh, which is typical of technology companies. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, you know, they had the chance to do that here in our ecosystem with the, all the support um, that is provided to our companies here. You know, Yuri, uh, you've mentioned a couple of reasons that, that uh, companies like this with exciting ideas may be interested in Canada. I want you to dig into that a little bit. What is it that you think um, can, because there is this global competition for talent, there's a global competition for great um, ideas and, and entrepreneurial efforts that could, you know, become the next big unicorn or just the next big thing. So, so I wonder, you know, what it is that Canada specifically offers. Um, that could help these companies, you know, uh, build or, or scale the next big idea? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, as a starting point, I would say that Canada is uh, probably one of the more developed ecosystems globally uh, when it comes to startups, when it comes to access to capital. Um, so this is, this is really important to understand that, you know, Canada uh, is, you know, for sure the kind of the small cousin to, to the U.S. when it comes to the size of the ecosystem and capital available and talent, all that kind of stuff. But for years, Canada has been punching above its weight in, in this space. Um, you know, you see Canadian founders kind of littered across all the major uh, Silicon Valley firms. Um, and, and, you know, as a result of that, we've always had a very strong relationship uh, with the tech community south of the border. Um, and, and that has more recently led to uh, almost like an erasing of the, of the border in terms of access to capital, access to customers. Um, and, and that's really been positive for, for Canada. But um, the advantage that we have in this context is that um, Canada also happens to be, uh, you know, a very stable uh, democracy, mm -hmm. um, a country where you know you can rely on on, on the social system for for support, things like healthcare, uh, education, um, you know, that really provide Canadians with a high high standard of living um, that we enjoy, and and you know this has been uh, very attractive, of course, uh, even to some of our American cousins uh, who we've seen coming up uh, up north. Uh, but you know, to people all over the world. Um, now, the the other advantage that Canada has vis-a-vis -vis our, our our cousins to the south is that you know, uh, despite kind of having these benefits um, and and this connectivity, we actually tend to have a, a lower cost of of talent, lower cost of living uh, in in our major ecosystems like Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver and Waterloo, uh, by comparison to you know the big ecosystems in the U.S. like Boston, uh, Silicon Valley, uh, Seattle, et cetera. And, and what this means is that, uh, you know, you can essentially get a lot more bang for your buck um, being here versus uh, locating one of those markets uh, while still having access to, to the talent, still having access to, um, you know, programs like IRAP and, and other government subsidy programs that essentially support uh, investment in R&D and innovation. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of like the best of both worlds where you have, um, you know, the, the access to this massive market uh, to our south. 
but but at the same time, uh, some advantages with regards to cost, um, you know, standard of living for for employees, immigration policies, et cetera. Now, you know, no policy. I know that you were around and you were part of the team that founded this idea, the startup visa program, but no policy is perfect. What are some of the issues with the program? Yeah, so I, I, I've long been a big believer in the program. Um, you know, we, when, when the government decided to do this, it was at the uh, advice of, of uh, a number of industry leaders from the community. Um, you know, the, the, the reason being that these industry leaders wanted to bring talent here uh, and wanted a better way to kind of get that talent um, into Canada without having to uh, take years and years of, of queue processing for, uh, for those immigration applications. Um, you know, the reality is that what the government did was to create a program that is industry led, uh, which, you know, is, is unique, I would think, for any immigration program out there. Um, this means that the industry has a voice and has a say uh, in choosing which companies are a good fit for the program and, and which should be immigrated. Um, this gives a tremendous amount of power to, to the venture capital firms, angel groups, and incubators and accelerators that have been, um, you know, working to, to, to help build up our, our technology pool and our talent pool here in Canada. Um, having said that, um, you know, uh, as with many things, sometimes there is a, a misalignment uh, on, that can make things a little bit more difficult than it could otherwise be. Uh, in the case of the Startup Visa program, it has to do with resources. So, um, you know, there's just so much interest uh, from so many entrepreneurs from all over the world. Uh, literally, uh, we, at least when I was in NACO, we were seeing hundreds of applications uh, coming into each of the designated entities every year. Um, this can sometimes be overwhelming for, you know, an independent uh, entity, uh, you know, for example, working um, in, a, in a smaller community where they're not used to seeing that kind of volume of, of applications. Um, so this this really uh, created a bit of a bottleneck, um, not necessarily within the government, although, you know, there's always those issues uh, on processing times and those kind of things with the government, but it also created a bottleneck um, in terms of the, the ability of the designated organizations to, to process the deal flow and respond in a timely manner to entrepreneurs. Um, it really just made for a, a worse um, experience. I, I think of this as a user experience problem. Uh, it made a worse user experience for the average entrepreneur that wanted to apply and, uh, and of course, that lengthened happen. the process too, right? I mean, yeah, you, well, you it, want this to be fast. You want this to be six months and suddenly. Yeah, well, there's a pre-step, right? Yeah, exactly. So there's a six months uh, to, the, to the application process once you get in, but getting into that application process can take uh, a really long time, uh, even just to get the attention of one of these designated entities. Um, so that, that, you know, that obviously created some challenges and it's not um, for, for lack of desire. I mean, I think many of the designated entities would love to be able to host uh, some of these entrepreneurs in in their uh, communities, but um, you know they have to be able to find the right uh, people and 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 right fit with their community. And uh, this takes time. Uh, getting to know these companies takes a lot of time. And, and in some cases, these organizations just were not set up for uh, being able to look abroad. And so you know organizations like uh, LATAM startups who are specifically looking abroad, or uh, in our case, uh, our fund uh, Canada.bc. Uh, we're specifically looking abroad and trying to support um, these organizations. Um, you know, we're trying to help overcome those barriers and, and make sure that, uh, you know, good entrepreneurs that want to come and build companies here in Canada can, can have a faster uh, path towards that. So, you know, here you were, you were at the start of the program, you've seen some things that have, you know, succeeded and, and maybe slowed down in the program uh, in turn. What are you trying to do differently with the program now? Yeah, so, um, so, you know, to, to a large extent, I, I, I feel that uh, there is an opportunity to be had still with the program. Um, you know, there are, like I mentioned, there are many uh, great entrepreneurs out there that would love to come uh, to Canada and, and uh, build a life for themselves while they're building their startup here. In many cases, um, you know, those companies have already business interests in North America and, and would like to expand on that North American presence. Canada is just a fantastic place to do that. And so, um, you know, the reality is that uh, it, sometimes in order to do that, it seems easy enough uh, when you're thinking about it, but, uh, you know, there are practical realities of getting on the ground, getting to set up with a business um, and having partners in place that, that can help support that is, is a huge advantage, um, you know, if you're going to be making that migration and taking that risk. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've been doing with Canada Ventures is essentially uh, trying to fix, uh, we say trying to fix start a visa program uh, from a few standpoints. 
the, the first one is uh, we're trying to make sure that any qualified entrepreneur that would like to come to Canada has a pathway to access the designated entities um, and, and get their attention. Uh, so we, we And a designated by, entity would be, would be an organization that has been approved by the government, like LADM startups too. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so what we're trying to do is help uh, kind of triage the front end of that deal flow, um, you know, work with the uh, designated organizations in, in partnership um, mm -hmm. to help them sort through uh, the volume of applications that they're receiving uh, and be able to identify the ones that make the most sense for them. Uh, so we're helping to support them and provide extra capacity to due diligence uh, on these companies abroad to uh, match these companies to the right organizations. And, uh, and so through that, we're trying to unlock uh, one, one deadlock, which is, uh, you know, getting the attention of the right organizations. Um, beyond that, um, you know, we're big believers in this market uh, and the access that you have through Canada uh, to the broader North American market. So we're, we're really razor focused on trying to help these companies once they land here uh, to generate sales and replicate the success from back home in this market. Um, so, you know, uh, obviously we, we um, require a certain amount of, uh, of development uh, for us to be able to work with companies. They need to have a product. They need to have something that they're selling already uh, that we can help them sell here in this market. But our goal is really to align our interests with them and, and help them sell that um, and not do it in, you know, uh, from a fee based standpoint, but rather as an investor. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, when we work with a company, we, we invest our own time and energy and, and also capital into those companies and then uh, really try to help them uh, generate that sales, generate, you know, the validation that they need in this market to be able to raise around and, and be successful here. Um, and then as we kind of follow their progress, we invest in them. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to ask you um, about uh, what it takes to craft a successful application. But before we get to that, I'm curious as to what makes for an ideal candidate? Yeah, so for, for us, um, you know, we're really looking for uh, great technology companies. Um, we're specifically looking for uh, uh, business facing companies. So B2B, SaaS, enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, in our case, uh, our partners are not exclusively looking at that. So sometimes we'll refer uh, companies to the designated entities uh, that don't necessarily meet our funds requirements, but we'll still kind of help support those companies through and help support the, the function with the designated entities. Uh, but for our fund, we're specifically looking for, uh, you know, enterprise facing companies that uh, hopefully are already selling in North America, but even if they're not, as long as they have some traction uh, in their market, they have a product, they've sold it in their market to corporates in their market, um, we, we help to get them here uh, and help them to replicate that. So typically we're looking for a certain amount of, of revenue, uh, a certain amount of traction uh, in terms of um, you know, customer traction. Uh, we're looking for companies, of course, to have a bit of runway of, uh, as well. Uh, so understanding that one of the things that companies are going to come here for is fundraising. Uh, we want to make sure that they have a chance to get landed uh, and, and, you know, execute on that initial kind of soft landing before um, they need to kind of go and raise around. So that gives them the time to, to establish their credibility in the marketplace. Um, so these things are all, uh, all really important to us. And then, um, you know, finally, we, we're looking for ambitious uh, entrepreneurs. So we're looking for people that want to build big global businesses. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with small businesses, but, uh, but for the purpose of our fund, uh, we require that uh, their ambitions be aligned with ours and, and that, they, uh, th that they're really shooting to do something um, world class. Build a rocket. Okay. Um, so let's get to that question of, you know, how, you know we know that we're going to have some uh, entrepreneurs here listening. You know, give us some tips on what it takes to craft a successful application. What do you think should go into that? Yeah, I think um, so. You know, the, the important thing is to understand is that you're kind of looking uh, and speaking to different audiences uh, when you're doing this. So this isn't, uh, you know, a typical kind of business plan uh, kind of situation in, in many cases. Um, you know, to, to be successful, first, you have to be able to um, meet the requirements of the designated entity. So you have to know carefully which designated entities are a good fit for the kind of business that you have. Um, so, you know, some designated entities may be uh, supportive of, of locally focused businesses or, um, or you know, uh, certain industries, uh, whereas other designated entities may be more specifically looking for, uh, like you were saying, rocket ships or uh, deep technology companies. Um, so understanding your audience, just like anything else, making sure you understand who you're talking to and what they're looking for and, and not just applying uh, uh, blindly to every, uh, every entity out there just to try to see what 
sticks. That's very rarely uh, going to be uh, successful. Uh, really, what needs to happen is you need to have a, a dedicated and focused approach on on you know get to know uh, your your partners here. So if you're applying to to be accepted by a designated entity, get to know them, get to know what they what they like, um, what they typically invest their time and energy into, so that you can align with that. And then finally, on the government side of things, um, you know it's really important that things be straightforward. Um, so with the government. Um, you know, anytime you have the government trying to understand business, uh, we can get into some tricky uh, situations. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, anything that kind of looks uh, a bit off, uh, looks uncommon, is going to naturally raise questions. Um, and so, you know, try to make sure that, that you know, your, your house is in order, that your term sheets are clean and, and your cap table is clean and, and uh, that you have a great business that you're trying to start and you can, and the, the paperwork kind of reflects that. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, you know, I, I, one piece of advice I would have on that is that, you know, it's, it's, it's more important that you have a great technology company, um, that, you know, has great ambitions and, and makes sense in this market, um, than, uh, and to say how much money do you have in the bank account or, um, or, uh, you know, um, what, what is your business done, uh, in its home market, uh, really for it to be a fit for this. Uh, for this program, you have to show what you're planning to do in this market. So this is uh, also important. Now, it must be actually, just as on a final note, it must be lovely for you to be working with this program after being one of the people that, uh, that created it. Was it. What is it like for you to know that this could play a part in, in uh, the econo- uh, economic recovery of the country? Yeah, I mean, I think... Um, on a personal you know, note, that is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, on a personal note, I mean, I think, I think you know, part of the reason why uh, I've always been a big champion of this program and, and supportive of it is because I saw the opportunity for it to, mm-hmm. to play a significant role in, in the building of, of Canada's uh, ecosystem and, 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 and infrastructure, if you want to think of it in that way, uh, for the startup community. Um, you know, I, I really uh, would love to see uh, more of it, actually, and that's part of the reason why I'm investing the time and energy um, to build a model that you know tries to align interests and tries to make sure that um, we're solving some of the challenges that the program has had. So from 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 a personal standpoint, it's obviously um, uh, it's exciting and and uh, um, ultimately rewarding to kind of know that something that I've done in the past uh, uh, still has potential to have even more impact than it has had so far, and uh, and that I can have a a, a small kind of piece. In, in pushing it in the right direction is uh, is incredibly That's rewarding. That's great. That's great. Well, congratulations, Yuri, and thank you. Thank you for, for taking the time to sit down with me. I appreciate it. Uh, Yuri Navarro is the managing partner of the Canadian venture capital firm, uh, Canada Ventures, and one of the architects of the Startup Visa program. You can find out more information about his firm at canada.vc. And for more information on the Startup Visa program, or our host, uh, Ladam Startups, uh, please visit ladamstartups.org. Thank you.